Alex Polizzi is an award-winning hotelier with over 20 years' experience of working in the world's most luxurious hotels. Born into the legendary Forte Hotel dynasty, she's on a crusade to transform Britain's most desperate hotels and B&Bs. How can you be so arrogant and so conceited as to think you can just walk in and start running a hotel? From outrageous owners... Well, I think Jane's completely deluded. If I could have your attention, everybody! ..to dodgy decor... Oh, man we mock! Need I say more? Nothing escapes the hotel inspector's beady eye. I'm sure some people who stay here would rather that they weren't there. Or her quest for perfection. You're polishing a turd, Jonathan. This week, the hotel inspector hits troubled waters. Oh, my God. Yeah, uh, scraped it right on the corner. Randy, it goes in the door. It goes in the door. Anyway. No, don't do this. He's incredibly self-indulgent about how he treats this boat. It's like having two wives with her on board. Bunny's always moaning at me, too. Darling, this is supposed to be the bit that you're good at. The African Queen, an 85-year-old Dutch barge converted into an eight-bedroom floating hotel. Moored not on the sultry Nile, nor the exotic Zambezi, but three miles east of Reading on the River Thames. The African Queen, hello. South Africans Andy and Bonnie Cowley bought the boat three years ago after running a successful hotel and restaurant on the Isle of Wight. But their new life on the water has been far from plain sailing. I didn't tighten this blooming thing. I took the wheel off the other day and I didn't tighten it enough. Oh, I'm on the wrong side of the river. We knew the river. We knew how to run a hotel. And we also had the, the restaurant experience. So we thought, we're going to fly, you know. This is going to be done great. Some, we didn't we have any customers. opposition. <laughs> but <laughs> it didn't work like that. <laughs> the couple run short break cruises in the summer and traditional B&B &B while the boat is moored up in winter. But with occupancy rates as low as 13%, Andy and Bonnie are struggling to keep their heads above water. We cannot meet our ob obligations with the bank at the moment. If we didn't uh, do something drastic, we would probably lose the business. When they do have guests, the workload is tough. Navigating the river... If we breach the boat, we're in deep, deep trouble. Maintaining their vessel... No, no, not that one. This one. Cooking... Cleaning and entertaining. Okay. Bye then, folks. Come again. Bring your wallets. It's pushing them to breaking point. We've got no electricity. What are we going to do? I don't know, love. I'm going to try and get uh, the You're going to get it started, man. Don't talk junk. I've done it before. At the end of each cruise, I've got to go and give the old uh, turn of the grease gun to push grease into the gland packing, otherwise we'll sink. And here you are serving at the bar and you think, hey, wait a minute, we're sinking. Oh, what have I done? Andy and Bonnie's unique floating B&B &B is in dire straits. We are not old enough to retire yet, and we haven't got any money, so uh, we've just got to keep going, you know. We just have to make it work. Enter the hotel inspector. Andy and Bonnie are hoping expert hotelier Alex Polizzi can throw them a lifeline. I've never been to a floating hotel before, so this is a first for me. At the moment, I'm a bit ashamed of the boat. <laughs> Andy's had a go at painting it, and he's got the worst, he's the worst decorator you could come across. Well, a bit nervous, to say the least. I mean, it's almost like um, waiting outside the headmaster's office, you know what I mean? I was nervous whenever I, and I was always outside the 
headmaster's office. It's not a thing of great beauty, is it? It's certainly not glamorous. Looks rather like a floating porter cabin. Let's hope it's better inside. Hello. Hello. Careful coming up the gangplank. Hold tight. Welcome aboard. Andy. Alex Felizzi. How do you do? Nice, nice to, to meet you. you. Come on in. Thank you. Thank right. you. There's Bonnie in there. Lovely to meet you, Alex Polizzi. Hi. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm well, thanks. And Th you? <laughs> Thank you for inviting me. That's good. It's a pleasure. <laughs> First stop, below deck, and the all-important guest accommodation. Here's the um, superior suite. At three and a half by four metres, room one's their largest cabin. Okay, okay. thank you, Bonnie. Okay. See you in a minute. Okay. There's obviously an electric blanket on the bed, which should be much appreciated on a damp river. Nice linen and a proper blanket, thank goodness. And a very adequate little chest of drawers. In small scale, they've got absolutely everything they need. There's a mirror, there's somewhere to put your makeup, there's a chair in the room. So I think at least the minimum requirements are definitely being met. Prices range from £72 a night bed and breakfast up to £175 per night when cruising. Well, it's tight, but it's perfectly acceptable. It really is. In fact, it's rather romantic. The rooms have passed muster. But Alex is about to discover how rudderless the African queen really is. Uh, he's not a very good waiter. <laughs> no more. I don't want you to okay, this down. That's I will not let you down. It's unfortunate. The African Queen, a floating hotel, is floundering. Despite its desirable River Thames location, owners Bonnie and Andy Cowley are struggling to attract enough guests. What a life, eh? What a life. If we were making money, it'd be fantastic, wouldn't it? And the workload of running both a boat and B and B is proving too much to handle. Bonnie, is there a cup of tea going, darling? I'm freezing my little ears off. We can't float on us. We all will sink definitely. The couple have made an SOS call to the hotel inspector. Alex found the eight cabins to be small and basic, but otherwise acceptable. Now she wants to check out the service. She's booked in for dinner to sample Bonnie's signature South African cuisine. Show um, Alex the menu, and uh, as I say, try and encourage her to eat the Cape Malay menu. So I've got, got my got instructions, my love. I'll do my best. As well as being skipper, navigator and ship's engineer, Andy's also the barman and waiter. Tell me about peri-peri sauce. Peri-peri sauce, everyone thinks it's a Portuguese word. It's actually, uh, um, it's not Portuguese, it's an African word. It comes from uh, the, um, it's the... Uh, oh. uh, I'm not sure what he's saying because he gets, gets it all wrong each time. He's not a very good waiter. <laughs> Andy may not be a world-class waiter, but he can talk the hind legs off a springbok. Now, Baburti is uh, uh, minced beef, basically cooked in a lot of fruit. So it's got... He loves people. He's drawn to people like a magnet. A lot of people um, uh, understand curries to be very hot, but we, the, basically the Malay... Yeah, it's a little bit isolated, so he's got nobody to talk. If anybody comes, like fishermen and everything, he's out there like a shot. Each recipe varies from family to family. In, and if the uh, guests are, are here, he doesn't need them. He stays up all night talking to them. In, in the old days, it depended on how much fruit there was and how much meat there was, depending on the wealth of the family. So and I said, please let them eat and stay away. But um, he's, he's just born there, you know, so. <laughs> mm. Alex, I'll just put that there on the stove for you. Thank you very much. I'll just Careful take... you don't burn your little fingers. Okay. And, um, 
Bon appetit. Thank you so much, Andy. He can't stay away from people when they're trying to eat their food. He just hovers over everybody while they're eating. <laughs> just be careful, it's a bit, um, you know, the old um, stove is a bit slippery, so. Okay, my darling, careful. I'll be careful. Chicken's delicious. Andy's relying on a little Dutch courage to get him through the inspection, but Bonnie's not happy. I don't want you drinking anymore. You've drank a whole glass of wine within five minutes. Okay. You get drunk. I'll Please be very don't careful. Do it. Okay. No, don't oh. no more. Please, no more. I don't want you to okay, us down. I important. will not let you down. It's important. Please don't let us down. It goes in the door. It goes in the door. Anyway. No, don't do that. It's closed. Don't stay there, man. Sorry. Sorry I got in the wrong place. He always gets things wrong. The hotel inspector retires well fed. But the evening has been far from the demonstration of slick professionalism she demands. And it's not a happy ship. You've let me down again. Always the same. You, you have. It's ridiculous, man. A new day and calm has been restored on the River Thames. It's for my darling. After a comfortable night, Alex has noticed her cabin is not as well appointed as she would like. There's only one towel per person, and I think certainly women need one for their hair and one for their bodies, and it is quite nice to have something different to wipe your hands on. The other trick I think they're missing is that they could do something to add value, such as having a thermos flask of hot water in the room, so that if someone wants a cup of tea or coffee, either last thing at night or first thing in the morning, they can look after themselves and not have to bother and your bonnie upstairs. It's time for the hotel inspector to deliver her verdict on Andy and Bonnie's African Queen. First, there's the quality of service. After this first visit, there's things that are immediately apparent to me. I think we need to employ some staff for you, for this business to go forward. And Andy, I think you need to be more aware of when it's appropriate to chat to guests and when it is to step back. I do think, especially couples, quite appreciate time on their own. She's been telling me that for a while, haven't you, love? That's <laughs> yes. just ganging up on me. No, I'll, I'll try my yeah, best. This is, this I will is be Alex honest. telling you now. You I have know, to listen. I know. I do think that you're missing a couple of tricks. There's some very nice touches that you do. For example, the electric blankets on the beds, much appreciated, very, very nice. I do think that people, though, appreciate enormously anything that they feel adds value, that they are paying something, but they're getting more than they expected. For example, when people go to bed, ask them if they'd like a thermos flask of either tea or coffee. If yeah. you did that and put two biscuits in every room and that was something that everyone got every evening if they wanted it, okay. you know, it yeah. just makes you feel mm. special. It makes yeah. you feel a bit spoiled. Next, the African Queen's scruffy exterior. I also think that the outside of the boat needs a paint. paint. Yeah. You have a chance to make a first impression only once and that mm. first impression is never eradicated. So when people arrive here, just the outside of the boat has to make them excited to get on, and then they're so much more forgiving mm -hmm. about any little hiccups. Yeah. And lastly, more effort must be put into marketing. Now, you have a very nice product. I think that you have to pick up your game a bit, because I find it amazing that such a unique product isn't out in the public domain more. OK. OK? Yes. Here endeth the lesson. <laughs> <laughs> Alex disembarks from the African Queen, leaving its skippers with some clear objectives. First, they need to hire staff to help with smaller jobs. This will allow them to concentrate on marketing their unique B&B and provide a more professional service. And the boat's lacklustre exterior needs a revamp. I think next time she comes, she'll be amazed at how I've improved on this. 
don't worry. I think it'll be okay. I'm going to try my hardest. You know, what else can you do? I mean, my whole livelihood, de livelihood depends on it. Can't, you know, box it up, can I really? Andy and Bonnie begin by thinking about a new, stronger identity for the African Queen. Well, we're trying to get ideas from um, boats of the 1930s. I think I would like to go with the black, white and red. And they're sprucing up the cabins. Um, I don't think Alex would go for this. And no, what, you, what you need is a bit of the old wow factor. Yeah. Look at these boxes, Andy. I think these look quite nice in the bathrooms. You yeah, know, very pretty. Looks great. But the hotel inspector is worried that Chatterbox Andy hasn't yet learned to be a discreet host. So she's secretly sent a couple to check in for a romantic birthday treat. They'll be monitoring Andy's every move. Didn't expect anything like this. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Um, Hello there. I'm Bonnie. Hello there. Hello. Nice to meet you. I Hope you have a lovely stay. Thank you this very a, much. This is a really nice setup here, so oh. looking, looking forward to the evening. Thank oh, you. I'm glad you enjoy it. Yeah. You know, I'm always wanting to go. Uh, I think Alex said, oh. "Better keep quiet." It's a positive start, but with Bonnie confined to the galley, Captain Andy is soon going overboard. Excuse me, folks. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt you. I've on strict instructions not to interfere with any lovers on this boat or talk too much to them. So can I class you in that? Um... Yeah, you're not going to have a lot to do then, will you? <laughs> no. I wanted um, Andy to get the dishwasher and, and load it so that I could put everything away. I don't like things everywhere. Well, I think he's in the lounge with the guests, isn't he? So there's quite a massive flow, but we don't ever flood here. It floods on that side of the weir, but not this side. There's four, five weirs, and one of them is... Um, By now, Andy should course. have taken his guests' orders. <laughs> Bonnie has no option but to step in. You know, beautiful. Yeah, I've got the menu here, if you guys would like to have a look. Sure, be nice. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm fighting my urges. <laughs> you can see it's stressful, can't you? I'm trying my best. Oh, no. Don't you think I've done well? <laughs> <laughs> Try as he might, Andy just can't resist joining in. And then I thought, well, I'm not going to, you know, I won't shave with this thing, so I'd go... So I, I grew a beard and I thought, well... And then I got married. I got married without a beard, that's right. So it was after I got married. I was 26 that I decided to grow a beard because of the ingrown hair. I decided, right, Bonnie said, oh, I can't stand this beard, shave it off. And it was summer and it was hot. And I woke up in the morning and the little girl. The next day sees the return of the hotel inspector. So, you know your guests in there? Yes. I have a confession to make. OK. I asked them to come in here, to come here and stay with you last night. Oh. How did you feel like you got on, Andy? Well, last I night? was very restrained. Were you? Yes. You held back, did yes, you? Yes, I was. I was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I remembered. No, go away. <laughs> okay, let's go and see if they do have any comments that may help us. Okay. We thought these were nice people, and they turned out to be <laughs> spies. Plants. <laughs> Is there anything that you think could have been improved on for your evening? For example, the service, how was that? I think Andy was very keen to please. One of the things that is difficult is that when someone asks a question, you don't go and give too much information and bore people. Mm. All right, so just give them what answers that they need. <laughs> <laughs> and then leave them alone, yeah. walk away, and let them enjoy their yeah. meals or, yeah. or whatever. So, are you suggesting, in a very kind and polite manner, that there was potentially not quite enough walking away from Andy? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> At times. I mean, uh, he has to have awareness of what the uh, guests want. Mm. Yeah, so there it is. I did it again. I thought I'd done well. It's clear Andy still has some way to go to learn what's needed to be a great host. I think overall I've been quite kind to Andy because I think 
In general, he's incredibly self-indulgent about how he treats this boat and how he treats their business. This is not here to provide him with entertainment of an evening. It's here to provide him with a stable financial future. And so he has to focus less on what makes him happy and focus more on what makes guests happy. To avoid turning his guests off, Alex needs Andy to toe the line. So, Andy, I'm begging you. No, I is... promise I'll do better. Please. I will. I, I understand. He has listened to you, um, Alex. He doesn't listen to me, but he has listened to you. <laughs> She's more <laughs> frightening truly. than you do. <laughs> <laughs> I just think that if this is going to work, if we're going to make this work, all everyone has to pick up their game a little bit mm. and just be a little bit more aware of the fact that this isn't, this isn't pleasure for you two, I'm afraid. This is business. Survival. Mm. Um, when you're driving a boat, you, you obviously have to learn to navigate it and uh, not hit things, and, which I've done, I think. But now it's a little more subtle looking after people. I mean, if you make a mistake on a boat and you hit a bridge, it's quite obvious where you've made the mistake. Whereas if you made a mistake when you're looking after people and when they're on a romantic weekend, it's not always apparent that you've made the mistake. Andy appears to have got the message, but can he really steer the business back on course? Oh, bugger it. I scraped it right on the corner. We haven't had a very good day, have we? Faced with a boatload of journalists, will Andy and Bonnie sink or swim? Unbelievably, Andy doesn't have enough diesel on board the boat. I feel a slight sinking feeling, actually. Three miles east of Reading on the River Thames is the exotically named African Queen, a unique floating B&B. &B. Its very own Humphrey Bogart and Catherine Hepburn, South Africans Andy and Bonnie Cowley. Good morning, darling. How are you today? Since splashing out on the barge three years ago, they've had pitiful occupancy rates and now face spiralling debts. There have been many times we thought, well, that's it, the, we've, you know, we're in so much trouble, there's no ways we can see the light at the tunnel. Hotel inspector Alex Polizzi was underwhelmed by the boat's appearance. Looks rather like a floating porter cabin. And has uncovered a distinct lack of professionalism. No, don't do that. It's closed. Don't stay there, man. He always gets things wrong. Now it's time for Alex's plan to make over this grand old lady. It's all hands on deck as the exterior gets a smart new paint job in a nostalgic 1930s black, white and red colour scheme. Hiya, chaps. Is that going to... Is that stuck there to...? It will be. Uh, it's neat and clean, isn't it? Bright windbreaks add eye-catching branding and create an attractive sheltered sun deck. Yeah. Happy as Larry. I'm a bit nervous now. The boat looks a bit too posh for me. <laughs> it's beginning to look really nice. Inside, new blinds and soft furnishings complete the vision. I think it's definitely getting the 1930s look. Just the touches of colour that are being introduced just looks amazing. I'm really very, very excited about the whole thing. <laughs> With the transformation of the boat's image well underway, it's time to tackle Andy and Bonnie's lack of professionalism. David. Hey, Andy. Good afternoon. Come aboard. <laughs> They've been struggling to run the floating hotel and look after guests yeah. at the same time. So Alex wants them to employ an experienced member of staff to up service levels and free them up to concentrate on improving their business. They're hoping David Van Senzi has the right credentials. I see that you've actually worked on the QE2. That's right. Well, that must be a bit different from the African Queen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Bonnie now has staff she can trust, 
and the extra help with the housekeeping means she can work on adding Alex's special little extras to help raise their B&B &B above the competition. Alex said that um, to make people feel special, you should have these little extras in the room. And she suggested that, um, firstly, I have a flask because she felt like a cup of tea and she didn't feel like coming out of the cabin in her gown and meeting Andy, obviously. <laughs> I think she's very funny. And um, <laughs> now, she suggested that we have flasks in the cabins. Two months since her last visit, Alex is back to check if the African Queen is ship shape. I can't wait to see it. I'm hoping that since my redesign, it's really going to stand out and sell itself. Andy and Bonnie's once scruffy and uninspiring barge has been transformed into a smart, stylish river cruiser. Oh, wow, that looks so much better. I love all the red. It looks smart, it looks very clean. It gives an amazing first impression. I think I'd be pretty excited now to arrive here and know that I was staying on the African Queen. The tired and tatty paintwork now gleams like new and the dreary world of black and white has had a much-needed injection of colour. Now the African Queen theme won't be lost on passers-by. And inside, new soft furnishings continue the elegant, nostalgic theme. Bonnie! Oh, hello. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine, and you? I'm so thrilled with how the boat's looking. Yeah, it looks amazing, doesn't it? And you've also hired someone, haven't you? Yes, I have. Um, he started um, on Tuesday, and he's proving to be really exactly what I wanted. Are you training him, or is Andy training him? No, I am training him, ah, too. <laughs> good. OK, just checking. <laughs> It's not just the boat that's due an overhaul. Skipper Andy needs an image to match his new look vessel. Andy, will you try that on for me, please? That's a bit too traditional, I think so. There we go. Oh, well, that looks rather nice. Undo lovely, that button. Yeah, it's a lovely fit. But it's, it'll get dirty in a second. So, yeah. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Come out then, let's see. Oh. I like that. Mm. That's undo the button again. You don't need the button. Why no. do you keep fastening don't. the button? I was taught to do that at school. Maybe you had a slightly different finger. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take it. Thank you. That's lovely. Bum. With a new look boat and skipper, it's time to drum up some guests for the floating B and B. In 10 days' time, Alex wants to relaunch the new-look African Queen to the travel press and local business community. But first, she wants Andy and Bonnie to start exploiting the most valuable marketing tool they have, one that's been under their nose the whole time. Hello. Hiya. Alex wants them to spend a day hawking their mobile hotel up and down the Thames. I think that uh, because we have got a product that you can take to people, I think it's, uh, it's quite good because if you're sitting in an office, you can't take your office to your people, but we can take the boat to people and, and invite them aboard. Just one decent cruise booking could generate thousands for the cash-strapped couple, so it's full steam ahead. Captain Andy's printing leaflets and Bonnie's cooking her signature dishes to sample. Hello. First stop, Reading, home to 13 of the world's top 30 global brands. At lunchtime, the towpath is usually teeming with suits, all potential corporate bookings. I'm hoping to get some bookings. I'm hoping to get, uh, um, either, even if it's just a day cruise, I'm hoping to get something. But it's eerily quiet. Yeah, next week. It's all shut down. Yeah. Shut down. This is the Easter holiday. Uh, yeah. Oh, is it all closed then? Yeah, more or less. It's the Easter holidays, and many businesses are operating on a skeleton staff. Andy only manages to part with a handful of leaflets before giving up. 
Well, the idea was to do a little bit of marketing and get the boat, you know, stop everybody, give them leaflets, get them to come on board. But with nobody on the towpath, it's miserable, really. They're hoping for better luck at their next stop, the affluent tourist hotspot of Henley-on-Thames. Yeah, what a lovely maid. She looked all right, didn't she, from a distance? En route, a slip in concentration. I scraped it right on the corner. And then an unwelcome discovery. Are you joking? Huh? There's something wrong with your inverter or something then, Andy. There's something very wrong. I can't understand it. There's just spent about a thousand pounds on batteries and uh, it's not working. Yeah. With the power out, the mission's aborted. They limp into Henley to make repairs. I've got my generator batteries flat. We haven't had a very good day, have we? But there's a silver lining. A passerby has been seduced by the new look African Queen. Um, well, I was just walking past the boat and I noticed that you do its sort of evening uh, meals and cruises and things, um, overnight stays. So Somebody wants to book a birthday, a 60th birthday for a weekend cruise. How many people? Ten. Ah. So, a minimum of ten. If that's ten people and it's a weekend cruise, that's 1,750 quid. Yeah, that's right. That's better than a poke in the eye with a sharp stick. But with the press and corporate relaunch less than a fortnight away, they need to seriously raise their game or risk damaging their reputation for good. We've got 10 days to be ready for the junket with the media and junket. everything has to be 100%. Right. OK. None of this. Yes, my darling. You, no none of what. this breaking down. You've no, got to have it man. right. The season Please. started. The old Jenny, once it's used every week, it'll be fine. Bonnie tries to generate some press interest for the big event. Dot com. OK. We're having a marketing drive on our boat called the African Queen, and uh, we wondered if you would like to join us. While Andy targets the movers and shakers of the local business community. I wonder if you'd um, like to join us on the, as we're having a little party. Are you, can you hear me? Ryan. Gone dead on me. Hey Brian. Hello. Oh, that's no good thing. As the big day draws near, they're anxious they might make the wrong kind of splash. I'm feeling a little bit nervous because I've got quite a lot to do still. I hope nothing's going to go wrong, but um, you never know with a boat. A boat sort of sinks or something. And they all got wet. Wouldn't be nice, would it? But that would be the worst thing, or... Yeah, I think that would be it. Or even the skipper fell overboard. That wouldn't be too... Uh, too, too good, either. It's happened before. It's the big day. A chance to showcase their unique B&B to the press and corporate market. There will be a short cruise, dinner, and an overnight stay for the journalists. A bit excited. You're a bit excited? Yeah. I'm going to go and get dressed. Are you going to...? No, I'm posh, though. I am extremely posh. No, you've got to wear your blazer. What, all day? Yeah. Oh, no, I'm going to greet everybody in your blazer. What do you think of this board for? Yeah, that'd be great, eh? Hello, hello! Hello. How are hello, you? Hello. Hello. Mm, oh, it is... Thank you. That's You're lovely. looking wonderful, both of you. Very you... smart. How are you feeling about the party? Um, apprehensive, a little bit, but uh, we're pretty confident. Good. Well, let's get this party started. <laughs> Andy's challenge is not to step back, but to step up, turn on the charm, and sell, like sell, day. sell all that's good about his floating hotel. Come along. Both hands, please. I don't want you in the river. On board are travel editors from national newspapers and glossy magazines 
and the great and the good of the local business here. world. So if you'd like to sit down and make yourself at home. But Andy is doing little to reassure these important clients. And this thing was rolling like a... It's almost as if she was going to turn over. I went downstairs. I found myself in a foot deep in water. <laughs> the boat was sinking. I would like to interject at this point. He is perfectly competent on the water. <laughs> I Can I give you a word of advice? As you have journalists, don't tell them anything that ever goes wrong. Keep your mouth shut and you're painting a perfect picture of life on board. So you do not need to tell them about technical problems. Yeah, no. just be careful what you say, I will. Yeah. Okay. Good, good, good advice. Oh. With Andy and Bonnie's guests ready to start the cruise, there's just one thing missing. We're slightly delayed because, unbelievably, Andy doesn't have enough diesel on board the boat. They came here to cruise. We're now losing the best of the light, and I don't feel it's going quite as well as it could do. How much? Andy's AWOL. And the group are left without a host. It's fallen on Bonnie to get the party going, but the shy chef isn't used to being front of house. Would you like something? Something to eat? You OK? Is there any stretch where you can go swimming along here? Well, I wouldn't swim in this river, no. You can also pick up a, a disease from the river, oh, which nice. is uh, uh, something to do with rat's urine. I feel a slight sinking feeling, actually. With the boat crawling with journalists, the relaunch of the African Queen could turn out to be a disaster of titanic proportions. I've only been in a room this small when I actually went to Robben Island when Nelson Mandela was incarcerated and saw his jail cell. How do you two think it's going? It was a little bit strained. Really? Yeah. Oh, yes. Darling, this is supposed to be the bit that you're good at. The African Queen, an eight-bedroom floating B&B &B based on the River Thames. And until now, less roaring success, more Mari Celeste. We're not doing very well. People just don't know we exist, quite honestly. Hotel inspector Alex Polizzi has revamped the boat's image and demanded a more professional attitude from owners Andy and Bonnie. Now they're relaunching their vessel to the travel press and key members of the business community. So you just come down off and knock on the door and hand over the cup, the, the rask and, and the thermos flask. Ready to rock and roll. An hour behind schedule, the African Queen finally sets sail for a short showcase cruise. Yeah, forward. Oh, for shit's sake. A rocky start, but fortunately, most of the guests seem content to sit back and enjoy the view. Absolutely lovely. Yes, very nice. But Alex is worried that the riverside scenery might not be enough to win over all the passengers. I think that Bonnie and Andy have really got to pick up their game. I mean, neither of them seem to understand the basic premise that we've invited these people on board to try and sell their product. Bonnie has always said that her forte is not chatting up the guests. But Andy just seemed completely at sea. <laughs> Alex gave me a stern talking to about um, not being attentive to the guests. She gave me a lashing, I must say. It's like having two wives with her on board. Bonnie's always moaning at me too about everything. And uh, so I'm getting quite used to it now. Despite the turbulent start, for the business crowd, it's a welcome break from the boardroom. So peaceful, so quiet. And if you get bored, you can moor it anywhere you like in this part of the river. It's absolutely brilliant. I'll definitely recommend it, yeah. I think it's beautiful. I really do. Just something different to possibly having people in our boardroom at work is to bring them onto a boat like the African Queen and go for a little cruise and just spoil people. The journalists are staying to sample dinner and bed and breakfast. Alex is worried they might not be quite so forgiving. So, first of all, how do you two think it's going? Um, I think that, you know, um, it was a little bit strained. It didn't just Definitely flow. in yeah. the beginning. Really? 
Oh, yes. Darling, <laughs> is this supposed to be the bit that you're good at? People. Well, I wasn't here, was I? You were at you the were. beginning when it was strained, yes. But you give them a little bit of bubbly, then they get unstrained. No, they weren't unstrained. They, they were strained. They were all hyped up. Yeah. Now. now, so no. I want you to go out there, first of all, be completely and utterly charming. David's doing a good job, but you need to jolly everybody along. Mm. OK. OK? Yeah. Let's That's go. That's all good. Um, yeah. <laughs> Dinner. A chance for the assembled to taste Bonnie's South African cuisine. After his pep talk, Andy's doing his best to be the convivial host. There's a starter, usually, of um, what we call a samosa. You people call a samosa. <laughs> <laughs> a taste of Africa on a Thames towpath is going down well. It's <clears throat> really tasty. Cheers, mm. it's not mm. too spicy. The point really. is, just do what you do well. Absolutely mm. not try to yeah. be fancy. I'm not quite sure. Andy is convinced that the event has been a triumph. Barn, everyone's happy as Larry. Yes. It went very well, I think. Everybody's happy, so well done. Well done, my So this is for him tomorrow. Oh, I love your lips. Andy, he's weird, isn't he? It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. But down below, Cabin fever is already setting in. <laughs> um, I've only been in a room this small when I actually went to Cape Town and went to Robin Island when Nelson Mandela was incarcerated and saw his jail cell, which was about the same size. But um, to be fair, it's not as small as I thought it would be. Um, I think I can just about stretch out. Fortunately, Bonnie's extra treats seem to be doing the trick. A room this size, and it's a cabin, you're not going to spend that much time in. The strengths of Andy and Bonnie, particularly Bonnie's cooking, is absolutely superb. So will a night on board generate the necessary reviews to bail out this leaking business? Next morning, smiles all round. Well, it was a pleasure meeting you. Your taxi should be here any minute. Thank you very much. And I hope you enjoyed yourself. And, Thank uh... you. Thank you so much. It's been it's really wonderful and I wish you every success with it. Thank you very much. I'm glad you enjoyed yourself. Thanks ever and so much. It was nice too. meeting you Best too. Nice sleep in weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, it's the peace and quiet, I hope, around here. We'll give you a nice write up. <laughs> Thanks. Lovely. Bye -bye. Thanks very much. Bye. Oh, she's got lovely legs, that woman. Well, okay. she's got lovely everything, really. Alex has had to navigate Andy and Bonnie through some pretty stormy waters, but it's been worth it. The response was great. As expected, they all raved about your food. They all loved the cruising. They thought you were very hospitable, both of you. Once you hit your stride, you came out here and you were absolutely charming. You were the best Andy possible. You really did do a very good job at kind of the, being quite self-deprecating and all those things which are so attractive about you. Uh, Alex, I think what we've got to do to remind me of your but the, of the advice you gave me is to have a photograph of you on the bar going like this. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Bonnie. Goodbye. And I hope your season goes really well. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, this is very embarrassing. <laughs> Don't be embarrassed. Mm -hmm. You behave Thanks yourself, you naughty man. You naughty, charming man. Be a good boy. Yeah, I'll try to be. All right. Yeah. And, and listen, darling, I'm here if I can help, OK? Thank you. I really mean it. Yeah, thanks. OK? All right, darling. OK. <laughs> Two months later, the African Queen is receiving glowing reviews. Bookings are on the up, and it looks like Andy and Bonnie's business will be afloat for a long time to come. Oh, 